Hello everyone, my name is Arun Kumar. In the previous module, we saw different web browsers, their versions. We also saw how you can secure a particular web browser. We learned about various features and technologies that exist in web browsers and how they can add functionality but still pose different web browser risk. In this module, we will now learn how you can secure the Mozilla Firefox, the Safari and similar browsers through settings. Let us now see how you can secure the settings in Mozilla Firefox. Mozilla Firefox supports many of the features of uh, Internet Explorer except for uh, ActiveX and the security zone model. Mozilla Firefox does have the basic support for configurable security policies which uh, is similar to Internet Explorer's security zone model. However, there is no graphical user interface for setting these options. I'll just discuss some steps to disable different features in Mozilla Firefox and hence increase the security settings. Also note that some menu options may change uh, between versions or may appear in different locations depending on the host operating system. You should actually adapt the steps as appropriate. So to first edit the settings for uh, Mozilla Firefox, you select tools and then go to options. In more recent browsers, it may also be written as preferences. After choosing options window, which has a category row at the top and the features for the category below. The first category of interest is the general category. Under this section, you can set Firefox as your default browser. You can also select the option which says always ask me where to save files. This will make it noticeable when a web page attempts to save a file in your computer. Going to the browser history and cookies under the privacy category, you will find options for browser, history and cookies. In the history section, you can actually disable the option to remember what I enter in forms and the search bar. So, which means when you enter form information, such as your name, your email, your mobile number, this you can disable so that it doesn't remember the form details. Also, when you enter a particular search item in the search bar, suppose you are searching for a particular brand of shirt or t-shirt, it will not remember and thus will disable certain ads to appear. If the browser remembers these options, it can violate your privacy, especially if the browser is used in a shared environment wherein different people also use the same browser. You can also disable the visited page and download history under this option. Going into the privacy tab and seeing this cookie section, you can say accept cookies from sites, but in the cookie section, select ask me every time. This will help make it obvious when a website is trying to set a cookie. So it will every time ask you before a website tries to set a cookie in your system. When the user is prompted, the contents of the cookie can be viewed and the user can select the following options. Deny, allow for session, that means allow for that particular session or allow. This, this actually gives the user more power and information about what the particular site is using as cookies and also gives better control of cookies as opposed to globally enabling them. Select use my choice for all cookies from this site to have the browser remember your choice so that you will not be prompted each time you return to the site. Clicking the allow for session button will cause the cookie to be cleared when the browser is restarted. So when you put and cross the browser, close it, the cookies will expire. 
if prompting for each cookie is too excessive you may wish to select uh, keep until i close firefox option this will prevent websites from being able to set persistent cookies remember persistent cookies expire after a certain time which is set and session cookies expire when the browser is closed many web browsers will offer the ability to store login information but this can be actually risky sometimes if you want to make use of that feature ensure that you use the measures available to protect the password data on your computer under the security category the password section contain various options to manage stored passwords and a master password feature to encrypt the data on your system there is an add on options in mozilla which says when a site wants to install an add on you can click on the option and mozilla will display a warning bar at the top of the browser when a website is attempting to take such action that action can be malicious also so one should always and let mozilla warn you before sites try to install add ons this option is also available under the security tab the content category contains an option to enable java java normally allows website designers to run applications on your computer this feature should be disabled unless required by the trusted site you wish to visit again you should actually verify if the site is trustworthy and whether you want to enable java to view the site's content once you have finished visiting the site java should be disabled until you require it again and if you press the advanced button in the same content tab to disable specific javascript features all of the options displayed in this dialog box should be disabled when not needed the content section also has an option to alter actions taken when files are downloaded each time a file type is configured to automatically open with an associated application this can make the browser more dangerous to use vulnerabilities in the associated applications can be exploited more easily when they are configured to automatically open to manage this click the manage button to view the current download settings and modify them if necessary under the file types section you can configure how firefox handles certain types of files the download actions dialog box will show the file types and the currently configured actions to take when the browser encounters such a file for all listed file types either select remove action or change action to modify the action to save the file to the computer this increases the amount of user action required to launch the related applications and will therefore help prevent automated exploitation of vulnerabilities that may exist in these applications now let us go to the privacy feature firefox from version 1.5 and later on they have a feature to clear private data this option can remove sensitive information from the web browser when you select clear private data from the tools menu so to do this you click on the tools menu and select clear private data alternatively you can do it through keys by pressing control shift and delete keys together when mozilla firefox is open you can also choose what kind of private data you want to clear when you click on this tab you can click on this tab and clear your browsing history your download history the cache cookies and in fact the authenticated sessions there is a no script feature available with firefox this is because firefox does not have easily configured security zones like internet explorer it can be tricky to configure the web browser options on a per site basis so for example a user may wish to enable javascript for a specific trusted site but 
have it disabled for all other sites. There's a very famous add-on which is available in Firefox, which is the no script add-on. With no script installed, JavaScript will be disabled for sites by default. The user can then allow scripts for a website by using the icon menu. Scripts can then be allowed for a site on a temporary or a permanent basis. If temporarily allow is selected, these scripts are enabled for that site until the browser is closed. To enhance this protection, no script can be configured to also block Java. It can also be used to block Flash and other plugins by default. This can help to mitigate any vulnerabilities in these plugin technologies. No script will replace these elements with a placeholder icon, which can be clicked to enable the element. So if you have a web page where the placeholder icon of no script appears, you can click that particular icon to enable that content. Additionally, you can click the no script icon and then click on options to go to the no script configuration screen. So if you go to plugins tab, there are a host of restrictions for untrusted sites, which you can check and uncheck. There is forbid Java, forbid Adobe Flash, forbid Microsoft Silverlight and other plugins. These options are under the no script options button. Apart from visiting malicious websites, users can also be put at risk when a legitimate trusted site is compromised. Hence, you should select apply these restrictions to trusted sites too. If enabling this option is too annoying, it can be turned off, but obviously at the cost of increased risk. Another popular browser that is uh, used to browse the world wide web is Apple Safari. We will now see how we can set some settings in Apple Safari and make it more secure. The Safari web browser is very much similar to Mozilla Firefox in terms of the features it supports. So I'll just tell you some steps to disable several features in Safari on a Mac OS X. The options for Safari for uh, Windows may differ slightly. Uh, we should also note that some menu options may change over time like with other browsers and uh, one should uh, adapt these steps as uh, appropriate. In order to change settings for Safari, select Safari and then Preferences on the Safari menu. You can also select the option Block Pop-up Windows. This option will prevent sites from opening another window by making use of scripting or active content. Scripting like JavaScript while uh, pop-up windows are often associated with, like I said, advertisements some sites may attempt to display relevant content in a new window therefore when you set this option it may disable some functionality of a site let's move to preferences and see how we can set some features once you select preferences menu the window as shown in the image will open the first tab to look is the general tab on this tab you can set up many options such as save downloaded files too you can tell where the downloaded files should go and be saved and open save files after downloading. You can also select to open these files which are safe after they are downloaded. Files should ideally be downloaded to a folder that you create for that purpose. To have it more secure, the option open save files after downloading should be unchecked. There is an interesting feature with Safari web browser, which is the autofill feature on the autofill tab, you can select what type of uh, forms your browser will automatically fill in. In general, using autofill features is not really a good idea. It remembers your credentials on some forms, some web forms. If someone can gain access to your machine or the autofill data files, then the autofill feature may allow them to use the stored credentials. To access other sites that they would not otherwise have access to. However, if used with appropriate protective measures, it may be adequate to enable autofill. File system encryption software such as OSX File Vault could be used 
along with the use secure virtual memory option to provide additional security for files that reside in a user's home directory. Going to the security options, the security tab offers several options. The web content section allows you to enable or disable various forms of scripting and active content. It is advised to disable the first three options in the section and only enabling them based on site specific cases. It is also recommended to select the block pop-up windows option. This uh, option will prevent sites from opening another window through the use of scripting or active content. Uh, again, while pop-up windows are often associated with advertisement, it may also disable some functionality of a website or the website may want you to see something very interesting as per your preferences. When you block the pop-up windows, it may disable that functionality. It is safer to use Safari without plugins and Java. So disabling the option enable plugins and enable Java is a good advice. It is also safer to disable JavaScript. However, many websites require JavaScript for proper operation because JavaScript is the, now the default go-to options to have and create dynamic interactive web pages. In this dialog box, you can disable cookies and also view or remove cookies that have been set. In general, um, we should disable cookies and enable them only when you visit a site that requires their use, ideally. But at this point, you should determine if the site is trustworthy and whether you want to enable cookies to view the site's content. After having visited the site, the cookies should be disabled until needed again. You can also choose to only accept cookies from the sites that visit by selecting only from sites you navigate to option. This option will permit sites that you visit to set cookies, but not third party sites. Finally, select the ask before sending a non-secure form to a secure website option is also highly recommended. So when it sends unencrypted data, form data, when viewing an HTTPS secure website, it will ask you before it sends that. So these were security settings for the Apple Safari. We will now see Google Chrome, another popular browser, and see how you can secure Google Chrome with the changing from some features from the options tab. Google Chrome has security measures in place to help protect you as you serve the internet. You can follow these steps to adjust these settings. So there's an icon which is appearing like a wrench in the browser toolbar. You can click that icon and then go to options or maybe preferences or settings on Chrome OS and click the under the hood tab. So the various settings that can be adjusted on Google Chrome are follows. But if you don't know these settings, unless you are confident about what you are doing, you can always click reset to defaults in the options dialog. Phishing and malware protection. This option is enabled by default in the privacy section. When enabled, Google Chrome warns you if it detects that the site you are trying to visit is potentially a phishing one or contains malware. So suppose you are visiting a website which has malware content hosted on the website, Google Chrome will prompt you and there is a setting for SSL certificates and settings. Go to the security section to manage your SSL certificates. You can also set your web content, click content settings in the privacy section to set your permissions for cookies, images, JavaScript plugins and location sharing. All web content except for pop-ups are allowed by default. You can choose to not allow them one by one. When we go to privacy settings in Google Chrome, some features you use for your information, they also contain your personal information, which is used by Google Chrome, such as the web pages you are visiting to enhance and protect your experience on the web. 
these features are uh, described below the first feature is suggestions for navigation errors in case when a website does not resolve or a connection cannot be established google chrome shows suggestions for the page you are trying to reach now the browser sends the url of this website to google in order to provide you different suggestions google chrome also predicts actions in the address bar when you enter a website in the address bar it predicts the action and uh, populates the address bar automatically but essentially google records a random two percent of this information from all users and the information is also anonymized after in fact within 24 hours there's a special dns prefetching settings in google chrome when you visit a web page google chrome can look up or prefetch the IP address of all links on the web page. Browsers use IP address to load a web page. So by looking up this information in advance, any links you click on the web page will load faster. So cookie settings by default, Google Chrome saves all cookies onto your computer, but you can restrict how it handles different types of cookies. All these features except uh, usage statistics and cache reports are enabled by default. You can disable them from under the hood tab. So this was about security related to Google Chrome. You can go to options, preferences and settings to change these settings so that you make Google Chrome more secure than before. With this, we come to the end of this module. In the whole module, we learned about various web browsers that exist, various versions, the availability of different web browsers in the market. We saw various technologies that exist in these web browsers. We saw how they increase the functionality of a web browser. We also saw how they pose risk to the web browsers and your browsing experience. We also learned about how you can secure Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox and other browsers through their settings. Thank you and a happy browsing.